Okay, and the results seem to suggest that it's a resounding yes to that question. Would it be possible to do this sort of thing on a, a wider scale or, or is that a bit trickier? It sounds pretty labour intensive. It is labour intensive and scale is always the issue when we talk about um, trying to improve reefs and actually help them at something the scale of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, not all reefs suffer the problem of having high macroalgal abundance, often in some of the more disturbed reefs, um, especially the inshore reefs. But the idea is that on these inshore reefs, we have actually people that are interested in coming out and helping. And so through our citizen science program with Earthwatch, it was very successful in using people to come out and help us remove the algae. And we removed hundreds of kilos at each time. And over the period of the project, and we've seen amazing recovery, like quite surprised at the recovery. But it's not only the recovery of the corals, the seaweed doesn't grow back as much. So it's not going to be an ongoing activity, hopefully, that the corals can actually take over and maintain the space they need for themselves. So David, what do you do with the seaweed you remove? And are we seeing more than usual seaweed? on those coral reefs at the moment? Is that a shift, a trend that you've seen in recent years? Um, globally, there's this interesting interaction between corals and seaweed. So as reefs do degrade in many places of the world, you see this increase in macroalgae. On the Great Barrier Reef, we're actually quite lucky. So it's only a small number of reefs that we're seeing the algal overgrowth occurring. And often it's been persistent there for a long time. So there's been historical drivers that have re resulted in the seaweed being really abundant. Um, as climate and obviously the El Nino comes into effect, we can and predict to see more impacts on reefs. So there is quite con a lot of concern around that we're going to lose corals and more corals and seaweed are going to become more common on reefs. And so in, essentially as we weed the seaweed, what do we do with it? We remove it and use our snorkelers, which we then take it to a boat and that's deposited at the moment at those small scales that we're working in, in composts at a local school. But we're looking at options of where we can actually generate the seaweed and use it in other potential sources um, as um, a solution to remove and be a carbon sink itself. Okay, right. Earthwatch, as the name suggests, is a global movement. Are other yeah. parts of the world having the same problems we are with their local reefs or, or is the Great Barrier Reef suffering more than most? Um, I'd say the Great Barrier Reef is one of the best placed reefs in the world, but there are reefs in, uh, in some of the Pacific Islands, um, some of Southeast Asia, and especially in the Caribbean where algal overgrowth and increased macroalgae are a serious problem. And so this is kind of a global issue that we have to face. It's a small potential um, activity that people can actually get in and help reefs, and we've seen the benefits that it can have. Um, but yes, it's then taking it up to a scale that is actually useful for reef health more broadly. Professor David Bond, fascinating to hear about that project. Best of luck with it as you do hopefully look at expanding it. Sounds like it's doing good things. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Ash.